Hey there, ready to dive into this whole thing about mindsets. We're going deep into Dr. Anna Malikian's book, Mindset Zone, Actualize Your Human Potential. And it's not just about, you know, thinking positive and hoping for the best. It's about like really understanding those habits our minds have and how those habits actually end up shaping like all our experiences. Totally. It's like we're, I don't know, it's like we've got these invisible lenses, right? Yeah. And we're looking at the world through them and they're changing everything. How we deal with stuff at work, how we define happiness. It's kind of wild when you think about it. Dr. Malikian says that understanding these lenses is like the first step to actually like making real changes. It really makes you wonder, what even IS a mindset, you know? <laughs> like, I feel like I've Googled that a million times. Oh, for sure. And the research can be kind of all over the place. But, um, Dr. Malikian actually breaks it down in a way that makes sense, you know? Think about it. You can be super hard on yourself in one area of your life, right? But then you're, like, killing it in another. Like, I'm never going to be a singer, but put me in the kitchen. Okay, yeah, I get it. I make a mean dish. Yeah. But Pavarotti, I am not, no matter how much practice I put in. And isn't that where this idea of belief-based mindsets comes in? You got it. She's really building on that work by Dr. Carol Dweck about fixed versus growth mindsets. You know, that whole nature versus nurture thing. Are we stuck with what we're born with? Or can we actually, like, develop and grow and become something more? What's interesting is that, like, even if you have a growth mindset, stuff like luck and other factors that are totally out of our control, those things still matter. It's not like some magic solution, but it's more like, okay, effort, strategy, persistence, those are the things we can control. And those are actually the key ingredients for for success. And speaking of effort, she talks about how like the way we praise kids can actually backfire. Like telling a kid they're so talented could make them afraid to, I don't know, try new things because they might like mess up and not be talented anymore. Totally. It's like we're accidentally giving them a fixed mindset. Praising talent can lead to this fear of failing. Whereas like if you praise the process, the effort, the strategies they used, that helps them embrace challenges. Then mistakes become like, oh, this is an opportunity to learn and figure it out. It's like that thing yet. Like I can't do this yet. It opens up the possibility. It's not like I'll never be able to do this. It's just right now at this moment, I can't do it. It's a game changer. It's so true. We're all works in progress, right? And this is just one way of looking at mindsets. Remember how we were saying it's like these lenses? Well, we're just getting started on understanding how these lenses shape how we see the world. Okay, so we talked about belief-based mindsets, but what about like the way our brains actually process information? Like, Can we shift from thinking about what we believe to like how we think? This is where things get really cool. We're going from like beliefs to the actual way our brains work. Dr. Malikian talks about two main information processing mindsets, deliberative and implemental. Think of them like um, two modes your brain can be in, you know? Deliberative is when you're like weighing your options, exploring all these possibilities, being open-minded. Then there's implemental, which is all about action, making things happen, taking those ideas and making them real. So it's like planning versus doing, kind of. Deliberative for the big dreams and implemental for taking action. But I don't know, I feel like it's so easy to get stuck in that planning phase. Yeah. You know, analysis paralysis, I've been there. Oh, absolutely. Dr. Millikan gets that. She actually gives some really good advice for, like, getting unstuck. She says we need to balance all that focus with, get this, periods of unfocus. Unfocus, what's that? It's basically just letting your mind wander. Okay, that is a serious light bulb moment for me. I'm yes. totally guilty of that. I put things off because I'm not even sure where to start. So, like, how do we get from that deliberative mode to you know, actually doing stuff. Is there a technique? There is. It's called the WAP method, and it stands for Wish, Outcome, Obstacle, Plan. It's about bringing structure to both the thinking and the doing parts. And it's shockingly simple. You start with a wish, right? So you clearly define what you want to achieve. Then you really picture the best possible outcome. Really tap into that, like, motivational energy. Okay, I'm with you so far. Who doesn't love focusing on a great outcome? But then it gets real, right? It does. The next O is for obstacles. It's time to identify all those internal roadblocks that we all have that might trip us up. But that's where the P for plan comes in. You create these like if then statements to tackle those obstacles head on. Like you're making a game plan for your goals. I love that. Hope for the best, prepare for the worst, but like in a way that makes you feel in control, not afraid. So, okay, we've covered beliefs and how our brains process information. Are there other kinds of mindsets? 
The third one Dr. Malikian talks about is all about frames of reference. It's like these filters we see the world through, you know, and most of the time we don't even realize it's happening. It's not just seeing things as they are. It's seeing them through all this other stuff, our past experiences, our biases, you know, even our cultural backgrounds. It all gets mixed in. It's like those optical illusions. Two people can be looking at the exact same thing, but they see something totally different. So wild. Exactly. And Dr. Malikian gives this great example of how this plays out with global mindsets and leadership. She talks about how even with the best intentions in the world, cultural biases can lead to people just not understanding each other or like missing opportunities. It's like we all have these blind spots, right? Yeah. So how do we even start to like identify and then actually deal with these frames of reference, especially when they're so deeply ingrained in who we are, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, Dr. Malikian says the first step is just acknowledging that we all have them. These biases exist. We all have them. Then it's about being willing to question our assumptions, like really actively trying to see things from a different perspective and being open to, you know, learning and adjusting our views. Easier said than done. Right. But oh, so important. I bet it can be kind of freaky when you have those aha moments and realize, whoa, I've been looking at this all wrong. Oh, tell me about it. But isn't that what this is all about, though? Like that's growth, right? Getting uncomfortable so you can, you know, actually grow. And speaking of growth, this is where Dr. Malikian's own story is so powerful. She talks about going through cancer twice and how that completely changed her thinking. Like it exposed a blind spot she didn't even know she had. Wow. Yeah, I can only imagine. That would definitely shake things up. It did for her, for sure. She was always all about being positive, which is great. But after cancer, she realized that always chasing happiness, like it was actually keeping her from living in the moment. You know, it's like we put off enjoying our lives until we reach some goal we set for ourselves way in the future. It made me wonder, are we all doing that? Like chasing some idea of happiness that's stopping us from actually being happy right now. It's so true. I mean, there's that saying happiness is a journey, not a destination. Right. right. But it's way easier said than done. A hundred percent. And that's why seeing those blind spots is so important. Yeah. It's not about beating yourself up for having them. It's like, okay, now I see this thing. Now what can I do differently? And the best part is this book doesn't just point out the problem. Dr. Malikian actually gives you tools to deal with these blind spots, which is amazing. Okay. So tell me more. What kind of tools? What are we supposed to do with these blind spots once we find them? Well, she's got this framework called the PIE method. It's super simple, but crazy effective. It stands for pause, increase self-awareness, and embrace experimentation. Ever notice how you just react to stuff instantly, like especially when you're stressed or something triggers you? Well, this is about hitting the brakes before you hit the pause button before you hit send. Give yourself a second to think. Exactly. Take a few deep breaths, go for a walk, whatever helps. The point is to notice those thoughts and feelings without judging yourself. And that self-awareness piece, yeah. that's huge because then you can be like, okay, why am I reacting this way? Is it fear, insecurity, something that happened in the past? Once you know the why, then you can start to experiment. Experimentation makes it sound kind of, I don't know, scientific, like we're in a lab or something. What does that actually look like in real life? It just means trying new things, new ways of thinking, new ways of responding to things. Get curious, you know, be open to seeing what works, even if it feels a little weird at first. Remember how we were talking about fixed versus growth mindsets? Well, experimentation is all about tapping into that growth side, believing you can change and get better. Wow. I love how it all connects. It's like we're not stuck with whatever mindset we have right now. We can train our minds just like going to the gym. Yeah. Speaking of. Didn't Dr. Malikian talk about that, like mental fitness? She did. She made a really strong case for why it's more important now than ever, especially with, you know, everything going on in the world. She even compared it to being physically fit. Really? What do you mean? Well, we know that if we want to be physically healthy, we have to move our bodies, challenge ourselves, eat the right things right. It's the same with our minds. If we want to handle stress, deal with change, and make good decisions, we have to work on our mental fitness too. Okay, that makes sense. So what can you do to like work out your mental muscles? A lot of things actually. She talks about mindfulness, gratitude, building a positive self-image, and challenging those negative thoughts that pop into your head. We all have those. And the best part is a lot of this stuff overlaps with the PIE method we were just talking about. This is all starting to click for me. For the longest time, I thought people were just wired a certain way, you know? But now I'm realizing, whoa, our mindsets aren't set in stone. We can actually change them. Exactly. And then she takes it even further. She ties it all into technology and AI, which is everywhere these days. It's kind of overwhelming, to be honest. It is. It feels like AI is taking over the world. So what's the connection to mindsets? 
That's just it. Dr. Malikian isn't afraid to ask the big questions. Like, what does it even mean to be human in this crazy technological world? She says we can't stop technology from advancing, but we can decide how we want to respond to it. So instead of freaking out about robots stealing our jobs, it's more like how can we adapt our mindsets to thrive in this new world? Exactly. And that's where her concept of the mindset zone comes in. Okay. You mentioned that a couple of times. Can you elaborate a bit more on what the mindset zone is? Absolutely. Dr. Malikian is drawing on Vygotsky's zone of proximal development. So is the mindset zone kind of like that, but for our minds? Exactly. It's that sweet spot where real growth and learning happen. It's that space where we're challenged just enough to stretch ourselves beyond our comfort zones, but not so much that we feel overwhelmed and give up. And here's the key. Dr. Malikian believes that we can actually access and expand our mindset zone yeah. by cultivating the right mindsets. So it's like having this superpower within us. Right. And just like any superpower, it takes practice and training to harness it. And guess what? The PIE method we were talking about earlier plays a huge role in this. Okay. I'm really starting to see how all of this connects, but it can still feel a little abstract. Is there a real world example of what this looks like in action? Absolutely. Let's say you're someone who really struggles with public speaking. You get nervous, right? Palms are sweaty. You just want to disappear. In the past, you might have just avoided it altogether. But what if, instead of letting that fear call the shots, you tried this whole mindset zone thing? Okay, so like instead of avoiding it, you kind of lean into the discomfort. Exactly. You could start with that PIE method. Next time you have to do some public speaking, you hit that pause button before the anxiety ramps up. Take a few deep breaths, go for a walk, whatever works. And just notice those thoughts and feelings, you know. Don't judge them, just notice them. Then you can ask yourself, okay, what's the smallest step I can take to get a little outside my comfort zone? So like baby steps, not trying to give a TED talk on day one. Exactly. Volunteer to share an idea in a meeting or practice your presentation with a friend. Every time you do that, you're stretching that mindset zone, showing yourself that you can handle more than you thought. I love that. It really shows how all these pieces fit together, right? From those different mindsets to the PIE method to the mindset zone. It's all connected. And you know what really hit home for me? Dr. Malikian's point about AI, she's saying it's not about competing with machines. It's about embracing what makes us human. It's about recognizing how incredible our minds are. Yeah, technology might process information faster, but we can think critically, connect with people emotionally, be creative. It's like we've got this amazing gift, our brains, but no one ever gave us the instruction manual. That's a great way to put it. And I think that's what Dr. Malikian is trying to do, you know, give us that missing manual, help us understand what we're capable of and actually give us the tools to use our brains to their fullest potential. We're not fixed. We can change. We can grow our whole lives. It's a pretty amazing thing when you really think about it. It's not about finding the perfect mindset. It's about realizing we have a choice in how we show up in the world. Yeah. Even when things are tough or confusing or scary. Exactly. And that's why I think this book is so important right now. It's not just about crushing your next presentation or hitting some goal, although that's awesome. It's bigger than that. It's about realizing you have the power to shape your own experience, to deal with the challenges and the opportunities, and honestly, to just live a better life. So as you go through your day to day, think about this. What if you use this mindset zone approach for everything? your to-do list, your relationships, your wildest dreams? What if you were a little less afraid of being uncomfortable, a little more open to trying new things? Because taking that first step outside your comfort zone, that's where the real journey begins. What will yours be?